you're here on this evening. At this time, the, it has arrived that we're going to begin our program for this evening. I'd just like to, first of all, welcome all of you here. Our program calls for the Mr. Samuel to be Judge Deborah Lewis Langston, but unfortunately she is ill tonight with the flu and she can't be here. So we wanted to pray that she recover and do well because we know the election is coming up and I'm sure she's run down because of that also. But we know that, that is, this is the time of season for the colds and everything. But anyway, we want to celebrate our pastor's second pastoral anniversary. And we just want to say that we are happy to be here on tonight for this occasion, for this event. At this time, we are going to stand for our devotion. On the table you will have the words of the song leading on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship what a second anniversary. Tonight our scripture is found in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and we'll start at the 25th verse. It reads as thus, To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, mm -hmm. not one that faileth. Why say thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? Mm -hmm. Thy way is hid from the Lord, and thy judgment is passed over from my God. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yes. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, mm -hmm. and the young men shall only fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. 
Isaiah the 40th chapter, from the 25th through the 31st verses. May the Lord add a blessing upon the readers, the listeners, and the doers of his word. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we will have prayer by Deacon J.W. Williams. Our Father, our Father in heaven, we come tonight, Father, with bowed down heads and humble hearts. Father, we come thanking you for another day, Master. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thanking you for another year, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that come out tonight, Father. Help us celebrate our pastor's second anniversary, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, it wasn't for you that we couldn't do this, Father. Father, we want to thank you for it this evening. Father, we know this evening, Father, that you know what we need, Heavenly Father. Father, you know what we need even before we ask you this evening. But, oh, Lord, we want to ask you to peace, sir, look in on us this evening. Father, I know you will this evening. And Father, I know you can this evening. Yeah. Father, I know that you're a God above all others this evening. Yeah. Father, we don't you don't need no help this evening, Father. But we sure need you this evening, yeah. Father. Yeah. Now, Lord, yeah. peace out, yeah. Father. Look in on us this evening, Father. We know you're good to us this evening. Reason why I know you've been good to us, Father. You woke us up this morning, Heavenly Father. Started us out on another day, Johnny Father. Now, Lord, oh, Lord, peace out, Father. Father, don't leave us in pain, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes, Father, when we have come down to the end of our journey, yes, won't be able to study war no more, Heavenly Father. Yes, oh, Heavenly Father, somewhere around the throne, Master, I want to hear you say, servants, well done. Yes. At this time, while we are standing, we are going to receive the honorees for tonight, Pastor and Sister Kevin H. Johnson. Again, I say welcome. If you 
have joined us to honor the one who is so faithful to his flock. A college professor once said, when I come to visit, do not treat me like home folk. I'm treated that way at home. Again, I say you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Lemons, for that warm welcome. At this time, we're going to have a solo from Sister Siandra Tisdale. Amen. Let's give her a hand as she comes.
beautiful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tisdale. At this time, we're moving right along. We're going to have Grace, and then by Brother Deacon Dale Griffin, and then we'll be ready to eat. Amen. Amen. Thanking you for all that you've done for us, God. Yes. We thank yes. you, Heavenly Father, for this present moment. Mm -hmm. For we realize, had it not been you that was on our side, well, well. where would we be on tonight? Well. For that we say thank you. We thank you for the assembling of the saints and friends Boy, here on tonight. In this banquet, mm -hmm. honoring this man of God, well. for the two long years that he has labored at the New Salem Baptist Church, mm -hmm. we thank you for his family. Yeah. We ask that you bless him, mm -hmm. bless this congregation, bless the food, oh God, that has been prepared for the nourishment of our bodies. These are other things we ask in your name. Amen and praise God. Amen. 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 who are represented tonight. Amen. Right here, we acknowledge them as well. Pastor Williams, yes. right, Pastor. New Dawn, New Dawn Baptist Church. Let's say amen for Pastor Williams tonight. <laughs> we're moving on with our program tonight. We're going to be uh, featured with a solo at this time from Sister Tina Lemon. Let's say amen for her. Amen. Thank you. 
He has become my friend. He has become my brother. And I am pleased tonight to be a part of this great church and to serve uh, under the pastors of this great pastor. You know, I was sitting there thinking a few moments ago uh, that to some of us, perhaps, we may think that two years is a short time. But two years when you're dealing with us <laughs> can be a long time. <laughs> So we are honored tonight to salute him in his two years of serving, and we certainly wish him many, many, many more. And you know, let, let me say this. Yes, we should clap. That's right. We should clap. That's right. And let me certainly say this tonight, that we certainly thank God for our pastor, for he is truly a man of God. But there is somebody beside him tonight Amen. that helps him make it through what he goes through. Amen. And we don't want her to feel that she's left out tonight. Amen. We thank God for our first lady tonight, Amen. Sister Deborah Johnson. Amen. Amen. Because whether you recognize it or not, they are one. And when he goes through, she goes through too. Because God made them one for sticking by his side and sticking it out. I, I've never been a pastor, uh, but I understand that it is an awesome task. You have to walk the chalk line because you have to do what you're teaching people to do. And it is an awesome responsibility to be in the in the. In the leadership role of a pastor, and certainly that of a pastor's wife as well. We want you to know that we don't hang our heads in shame tonight. We are proud of you. Yeah. We are proud of you representing us, our pastor and our first lady of the New Salem Baptist Church. We're going to have expressions at this time, and I know that there are so many that would probably want to say so much, because there's so much you can say about Pastor and Sister Johnson. They're good people. Amen. Um, we're going to ask that the family members who desire to speak at this time to give special expressions, as well as any of our church family, as well as any friends who are gathered with us tonight, we're going to ask you to take the time to come at this time. But we're going to also ask you that you would limit, if at all possible, your, your remarks to two minutes tonight, because there may be a many, a multiple people who may want to say something. And certainly, not only that, but we want to allow ample amount of time for the preacher to speak to us out of the Word of God. Is that right? Because I know that we all have something to say, but how many of you know that the Word of God is really the most important thing? Amen. Am I right about that? Amen. Am I right? Amen. So we certainly want to allow time for Reverend Robinson to be able to Amen. give to us the Word of God on tonight, and we do recognize that the evening is growing late. So those of you that are going to come at this time, we're opening the floor for special expressions from all of the, the family members of Pastor Johnson, Sister Johnson, as well as the church members who are here tonight, our church family of New Salem, uh, as well as any friends who are visiting tonight. You may come at this time. The newest member of the Johnson family, I uh, married Kevin's brother on September 30th. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I like to say that on behalf of the family, I, I know that I've met you at Rodney House the first time, and you've been out with us on occasions, and you and your wife have exemplified true holiness, and ask you to keep, um, keep the light shining. Amen. My life is for Jesus Christ, Pastor Johnson, another perfect guest. Truly, Reverend Johnson, I met him a long time ago. I met Reverend Johnson. <coughs> Excuse me, man. I met Reverend Johnson. I was in St. John Hospital. Amen. Man had preached six months before I got a chance to meet him. Mm -hmm. But I was just, I know the Lord sent him. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when he came out to the house to see me, I could just see it all over me. He was just like, I had been knowing him for years. Mm -hmm. Reverend Johnson had been a friend, he'd been a teacher to me, he'd been a pastor to me, and Lord knows he'd been a brother to me. And although my sister Johnson, She's just my all in all. What was Sister Johnson? It wouldn't be Reverend Johnson. I know that's for sure. And I just want to hold it tight, church. I just want to hold it tight, church, to keep praying that 
we would grow strong and he would be our leader and we would be our follower. Amen. We don't try to lead him, we let him lead us because he sent him to New Salem to lead us and we got to learn to follow leadership. But you cannot follow what you don't know. And say, Reverend Johnson is teaching and preaching. He is a wonderful pastor and I'm just so happy to be here on his second anniversary. And God knows I wish him many, many more. Amen. To our beloved pastor and his lovely wife, Deborah, you know you don't get this kind of carrying on too often, but tonight I, <laughs> look at that hair, it's leaping, isn't it? <laughs> It's just sitting so still, and I didn't mean to get up, but Rev. Johnson is just too nice for you yeah, know. Man. You just sit here, and somebody don't get up and say something, but you know we love you, yeah, whether well, you say anything or not. Amen. And darling, you know I didn't have to say nothing for you to know that I love you, Amen. but I bring you greetings from all of us around the table. That's your missionaries there, and yeah. part of your trustees, and. Deborah's little friend over there who tell us she don't have to do anything. She came out tonight to say, go ahead, look at her waving. <laughs> but um, the president of your trustee board was out of town tonight, but he sends his love and wants you to know that he loves you and he wish you many, many, many more anniversaries. Amen. And his brother is out of town, but he sent his standby over in the corner Amen. over there. Amen. That's always, he's like Harry, that he's old man river. He's always on hand. Well, we love you. And from the bottom of my heart, for the rest of New Salem Baptist Church, Amen. we love you. Everybody. Praise the Lord. I want to give thanks to Reverend Johnson, Sister Johnson. Oh, I got a testimony here about Reverend Johnson. It's been two years for him. My God. Nineteen months ago, Reverend Johnson came on East Grand Boulevard. And uh, I didn't know about Reverend Johnson. You know, he had bought us. He had came on East Grand Boulevard nineteen months ago. I was. I was in darkness then, but Reverend Johnson came on the boulevard and brought us over to New Salem Baptist Church. And ever since then, things have been going good for me, you know what I'm saying? Reverend Johnson, I want to thank you. I told you in that car, but I never thought that this would happen to me, to be up in St. Regis when I was <laughs> They really mean to me and my family, and to the church family. As uh, long as um, Pastor Johnson has been there, he's always extended himself and made himself available to everybody yeah, and everybody yeah. alike. And he's never too late, too early, too busy. He always finds time for us, and I appreciate that. In fact, there have been many times that I've, he's uh, had to counsel with me, with my mentee, and, and just all of us, I'm sure, have uh, only special uh, needs that he has uh, met since he's been there. And I just want to say that I really appreciate it. And also, I just want to say to another reason, when Pastor Johnson first came, it impressed me that he was so, he showed so much compassion mm -hmm. for the ladies at the positive image. And this, I thought about Amen. Jesus. He, we're all supposed to be compassionate and loving, and he just exemplifies all those things that uh, Christ uh, meant then and what he means now. We just ask that you continue to support him and his strive and efforts to uh, continue the ministry, and we just love you, we love you, we love you. Amen. Amen.
praise it unto God and with all blessings flow. It's good to be in the house tonight. Uh, honoring Pastor Johnson and Sister Johnson and to all my preach brothers on the roster and to the pastor and out there. It's just good to be here to give thanks to God for Pastor Johnson. Yes. And as one said before, being a pastor of a church, pastoring us, is more than a notion. Because you deal with a many different people with a many different personalities. And he got to be able to handle each one with their personality. And sometimes you love him today and when he gets through preaching on Sunday, you can't stand him. Because he has touched something that's personal in your life. And you don't like it. And ain't no sense y'all getting quiet now, so you don't like it now. Uh, but when you start hitting toes, you start getting quiet. But I want to encourage Pastor Johnson, it's better to obey God than to obey man. It's better to do the will of God than to please men. Because God got a reward for you. Man ain't got nothing. Amen. All right, y'all get quiet on that one. Pastor Johnson, uh, he's a man that is very faithful to the ministry, and he's faithful to leadership. And I shared with uh, Pastor Johnson, the only reason you are where you are now, because you were faithful to leadership. So you can't lead nobody until you learn how to follow. And he was faithful in his following leadership. Uh, Pastor Johnson uh, came up up under me in the youth department at Christland Missionary Baptist Church. And every now and then I had to slap him in the back of his head because he had a way about himself. If you see a knot back there, that's the one I put there. Uh, he had a way about himself that he had a he had a, a anger and a temper. And every now and then I had to slap the back of the head to get him back on track. But then after he came into the ministry, he came over to Hope, Unity, and Growth, which was called Hubs, in the ministry I had there. And Reverend Johnson worked diligently and faithfully in that ministry at Hugs. They didn't change the name now to, what is it? Positive image. But he's faithful in that ministry. And then God called him to a higher ministry. And what I'm trying to say, and I'm going to say that I told him I couldn't talk really two minutes because I'm just ain't a two minute talker. <laughs> Hey, no shame in me telling the truth. Truth will set you free. How many of y'all know the truth will set you free? But I want to encourage Pastor Johnson that if you remain faithful in your ministry at New Salem, God going to take you to higher heights. God going to do things for you that you won't even believe yourself, but you will claim them in the name of Jesus because whatever God gives you, you just going to have to shout about it. Matter of fact, John, you can shout right now because victory belongs to you. Where the heights you go, Mr. Johnson. Devin, you know I love you. Um, you know I love you. If you don't act right, call me. <laughs> but Sister Johnson, it takes a special woman to be a, a pastor's wife. Right. I won't go further than minister. It takes a special type of lady to be a pastor's wife. Because some things she don't like, but she can't say nothing while she's at church. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Some things she just gonna have to let go. And but when Reverend John to get home, he get the butt of it. Take a special kind of woman to hold her peace when she see right. anger and, and, and backbiting and backstabbing going to her husband. It takes a special kind of woman to hold her peace. And, and she didn't come that way by nature. God
God molded her. God shaped her. So keep on letting God mold you, Sister Johnson. And if you got a whoop, Reverend, whoop him at home. Because the reason why I say that, and I'm going to say that, I'm, I'm proud of it. The reason why I say that, because you can't afford to let the church member see the division in your marriage. My daddy used to say it this way, don't air my dirty laundry in the streets. I'm through, y'all. Johnson, I love you. I want to thank God for each of you who have spoken tonight, um, and this is what it's all about. Uh, this is his testimony tonight yeah. of the life that he lives and the people that he touches along the way. And uh, we certainly know that he has been called by God to do the work that he does, and we are especially proud uh, to follow him on tonight. Amen. We're getting ready at this time to introduce our speaker for the evening, our guest speaker for the evening. We're ready now to hear this word from the Lord. Oh, yeah. Whatever the Lord has given to him, we know it's all right because it's from the Lord. Right. Right. I am pleased tonight to introduce and perhaps present to others who may already know him, the Pastor Robert Robertson, who is the pastor of the Greater Missionary Baptist Church where he has served as pastor for 25 years. Yeah. He has served as the past moderator of the Fellowship District Association, mm -hmm. and he is simply says here that he is simply a man of God. Yeah. I believe that tonight. Yeah. I believe that he is a man of God. Yeah. We want you now not to sit in judgment, but sitting prevalent tonight as he shall come to us to depart to us, unto us the word of God. A word that will not only encourage our pastor and our first lady tonight, but a word that will touch us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Because as we are striving to be followers, we need a word from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hear ye him now in the person of the pastor, Reverend Robert Robinson, pastor of the Greater Missionary Baptist Church. Let's say amen for him. Yeah. God tonight, and to our honorees, and to Pastor, Pastor Branch, and Pastor William, to the other pastor preachers that be in it tonight, we thank God because this is a great night, for the Bible teaches us that today is the day the Lord has made, said let us rejoice, or we will rejoice, and be glad in it. Let me take this time to thank the uh, committee of this fine church for uh, the invitation for us to come to share with you tonight mm -hmm. and to the pastor for accepting me to come. Amen. 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 We're not going to prolong the time to bore you, but uh, don't preach long. Mm -hmm. No longer the baseball game lasts. Right. <laughs> and sometimes they go into extra innings, you know that? You ever try? So that's all, that all depends. That depends on your action and your reception to the word. Yeah. If I see someone nodding, then you add another 15 minutes to the sermon. Yeah. So if somebody get the nod and just kind of hunch on the bitch, you better wake up. I gotta get out of here. God bless you tonight. All right, I want to look for a minute uh, at a passage of scripture, and I would like to deviate. Just a little bit, if you don't mind, Pastor, from your theme. You have a good theme, Isaiah 61. Yes. That's a great theme. And I would like to deviate just a little bit from that theme to look at another passage that is found in 2 Kings. 2 Kings, chapter 6. And I want to commence reading at verse 1 and read through 6. 2 Kings. Chapter 6, commencing with verse 1 through verse 6. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, yeah. Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or too small for us. Yeah. 
Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take this every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Mm -hmm. But as one fell in a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Right. And he cried and said, Our master, for it was borrowed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut out a stick, and cast it in hither and the iron did swim. Yeah. I want to talk for a few minutes from this subject. Thank God for the man of God. Yeah. I, want all the new, I want all the new Salem to point at this preacher. Just Everybody in the building, just point at him. And repeat after me. Thank God, Thank God for the man of God. Say it again. Thank God for the man of God. God has smiled on you. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. He has yeah. set you free. Yeah. Yeah. God has smiled on you. He's been good. Yeah. 
época, nesta época, Jesus did his part. Amém. Bless you. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God. Thank you, New Salem, for thinking about the man. Thank God for the man of God. The man of God is a special person. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we'll say it. I have said it before. <coughs> God called me into the ministry not knowing that a preacher was a man like I am. Uh -huh. These were my words before I was called into the ministry. Uh -huh. I didn't know because I didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a man like you are with the male gender. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the anointing, Yes, he has been anointed by God. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. That makes him different. different. Yes. Well, Amen. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Now, now you cannot classify him as a man like you are. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't bring me that stuff back. Y'all put our pants on the same. We're talking about no pants. Yes, now we're talking, yes, talking no. about being anointed by yes, God. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so that's why it's good yes, to thank God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the man of God, yeah. one that God have given you, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. Yeah. For you say, I would give you a man after my own heart. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So that make him different. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It takes a special man yeah. in order to be a pastor preacher. All right. All right. It takes a special man, a bold man. I think about Paul, I think about Paul, how bold he was. Yes, sir. And ain't it strange how God always wants bold soldiers? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. God don't want nobody all right. afraid. That's you know, right. some folks, I ain't talking about y'all, I'm talking about somebody else. Yeah. Uh, some yeah. folks are not, uh, you know, they can't, they can't talk in church. My all right. All right. All right. You call all right. some folks, they get away. I'm so scared. But, but see, God can't hardly use you when, you, when, when you're not bold. All right. Yeah. That's why he get bold soldiers. That's why he can reach in the streets and and find him a pimp, yeah. uh, huh? one that is bold, yes, sir. Huh? and change his heart, yeah. and he be just as bold or bolder, amen, yeah. when he gets to preach God's word because he's already bold. Yeah. Hmm? Is that right? Yes, sir. So I know he looked at that person, you mean he was a pimp and now he's a preacher? Yes. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Paul was a person. That just as bad as being a pimp. He was a persecutor. He persecuted the church. Yeah. Yeah. But all of Satan on the Damascus road. Yeah. Uh -huh. now, I'm, I'm preaching now, y'all. Oh, yeah. 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 uh -huh. Satan on the Damascus road. He was changed. Yeah. Yeah. God changed his name. He changed his heart. Didn't change his direction. Said, now get up and go on down to Damascus. Yeah. Yeah. Take a special man. Then, yeah. And it's good, New Salem, and I wish I had time, it's good to have the man of God with you. Yeah. I'm going to show you right here in the text. It's yes, good sir. to have him with you. Yeah. He ain't got to be doing anything. It's good to have him even around the church. It's good to know that he's in the office. Yeah. It's good to know that he's in town. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Because if he's there, you just might need him. It's right in the text. You just might need him. Huh? The Bible said the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, the man of God, not Elijah, but Elisha. Now there's a difference, you know, huh? It was Elisha that said unto Elijah. When you leave, give me a double, you got it, huh? Yeah. A double push. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's good, it's good preachers to hang around your pastor. Yeah. Huh? Because if you really want a double portion, hang around your pastor. Yeah. Uh -huh. Elijah said to Elisha, when the Lord take me away, you 
got to be there, huh? Yeah. That's why it's good to be around your preacher. Now, thank God for the man of God. It's good to be around him. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because some of that that he have, I have a chance to rub off on you. Well, yes, preaching. So, said unto Elisha, uh -huh. we going into the woods yeah. to cut down food. All yeah. right. Yeah. Because where we are living now is too small. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, it's too small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Elisha just had finished here a letter yeah. right. mm -hmm. by the name of Naaman. You remember that story? Yeah, right. mm -hmm. He had just finished there. And now these sons said unto Elisha, mm -hmm. yeah. go with us. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. Just go with us. Well, it's good to have the men of God around. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. So the Bible said they went out in the woods mm -hmm. and began to cut food. Yes, yeah. sir. Now, that folks in here, I know, I know you all of them from Detroit. You've never cut wood, right? All right. <laughs> Look at me, funny. You know, cut wood with ass. You got it? Oh, yeah. They know. They know. I'm 63 years old, and I know somebody is old man. Yes, sir. You cutting down wood? Yes, sir. They went into the wood to cut down wood. I know what you're talking about. But number one thing was, when they, it's bad to go hunting. And don't even have a slingshot. All right. Not only a gun, but you ain't got a slingshot, huh? Yeah. So they went to cut wood down and didn't have nothing to cut with. All right. Yeah. So the Bible said they borrowed yes, sir. Mm -hmm. an axe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you got to be careful. New Salem with borrowed stuff. Yeah. Oh, no. It seems like things happen yeah. to borrow oh, stuff. Right. Right. Well, yeah. you, you know, you can, you can borrow your friend's car. His car can be running good all the time. Right. Start up every morning. As soon as I get it, you don't stop on yeah. it. Yeah. It just seems like that. You got to be careful with borrowed stuff. Yes, sir. Right. So the Bible said they borrow it and ask. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Mm, ain't that something? No, oh, yeah. Borrow it to ask. Yeah. Then began to cut wood. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And they went through the woods cutting down wood. Guess what happened? Mm. Glad Jackson will tell you, yes, huh? Sir. The axe head came off the yeah. hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Man, Not only did it come off, but it didn't just fall on the ground, but the yeah. Bible said it fell down into the river. Yeah. 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 By it being an axe head, it went down to the bottom. Yes, yeah. yeah. I hear it. Ain't that something? Yeah. Now, this is the part I want to get to. Thank God for the man. You got it, Nigel, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. God for the man of God. Yeah. Just for right. right. Yeah. They hadn't had the man of God with them. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Everything would have been in vain because they would have lost the act that they had bought. Yeah. But knowing that was the borrowed act, but prior to them losing the axe head. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine when they borrowed the axe? They didn't check to see it was the axe head loose yeah. All right. All right. Oh, on the hammer. Now, what that kind of preach this, huh? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and that's what's wrong with some of our members that better mission they Baptist Church. Yeah. They are loose <laughs> on the hammer. Oh, no. That's the way they act. That's the way they act. The way they act. Things are going wrong in our church. That's why there's so much bickering. Yeah. Because right somebody is loose, loose. You know. on the hound. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when you loose yeah. on the hound, you always yeah. slide off. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. We mad about every little thing. Yeah. Folks get mad if you just butt up against them in the church. Huh? Yeah. They ain't going back to that old church no more. They walk over you, but Hello. go to Tiger Stadium and they just jump up over your head and, and pour beer on your head and wave popcorn and you go back. 